What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Fresh RN Podcast. My name is Katie Kleber. Hey, I'm Elizabeth Mills. And I'm Melissa Stafford. And today we are going to talk about the unwritten rules of nursing. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. And we're probably going to think of more as we talk. But these are not in your nursing textbooks. These are not in your policies and procedures. (laughs) But this is kind of like these are the cool, not cool things to do. Um, Nursing is a very team kind of a thing. Um, It's not like you go do your own thing in a silo. You know what I mean? Like by yourself. We got to rely on one another a lot. So we're going to tell you the thing that you need to be aware of. (laughs) So you don't look like a jerk. Um, Yeah. Be part of the cool crowd. Be be cool, guys. I don't need to be perfect. But you need to be considerate and be cool. And so Katie is looking out for all of us and saying, don't bring something lame to the potluck. Y'all, don't you bring (laughs) cups. (laughs) We got them from downstairs. Or a bag bag of of chips. (laughs) (laughs) Like, come on. This is ridiculous. I got napkins. In defense. Can I say that, let's say, you know, you're, it's the holidays and it's Thanksgiving and, you know, everybody, we do a potluck normally at Thanksgiving and you have worked Tuesday and Wednesday and you're working Thanksgiving. It is, I think, okay to bring like some pie that yeah. you bought oh, at the grocery store. Okay, that's or, one thing. Fair point. That is fair. I don't need you to go oh, make, make this like home. gourmet meal. Right. I don't need you to drop a hundred bucks on this and spend like days making i don't need that don't hear me say that but if if you like show up with like a stack of napkins <laughs> or they're like all like fold like they look like, like you picked them up at the back here's of your some car from July chipotle <laughs> here i grabbed a stack from chipotle like oh, no and i also like don't like it when someone doesn't bring anything at all and they eat a bunch yeah not yeah. cool yeah that's true like this if you is, don't participate, you don't get to eat. Yeah, like that's mm-hmm. <laughs> you better go to the cafeteria, get you a burger, mm-hmm. quit eating this stuff. Like, okay, and I say that, and I'm saying this like jokingly, <laughs> but okay, the the potluck is a way for us to like bond. Mm-hmm. It's kind of it's like a team thing, right? Mm-hmm. I I I'm making something and bringing it to the team to share with everybody, and this is this is just like a way to build rapport and to get closer with people and. And I don't, I think if you're a newbie and you come, you show, like you're working and you sign, and you bring, don't bring anything and you bring something really lame, like you don't care. It shows you don't care. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm not, so if like, I'm not saying like you have to make this beautiful thing, but if you go to the store and you grab some, some of those sugar cookies, mm-hmm. you know, or like. Or some really good potato chips. Good ones. Not, not like the generic, like. <laughs> Brand name. Get, yeah. <laughs> Multiple bags or something. You better something. get the Cape Cod. <laughs> or Come Pringles. Or, or, oh God. You better get like seven of those. <laughs> <laughs> One for each nurse. Or Doritos. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I love Pringles. Oh my god. Okay, but I want. But my end of the day is like it's like that's a way for us to bond and to uh, show that we care about the team. And if you just like <laughs> like don't bring anything, you don't care. It kind of is like, hey, we're we're all in this together. Let's yeah. enjoy this together. Yeah, you know, because you'll be working holidays together. Sure will. You know, I mean, it's it's inevitable. So also though. Don't try to show up the nurse that's been there for 20 years who makes the best queso and also bring queso. You need to know. <laughs> yeah. Know their boundaries. Yeah. You need, there are ba- We need to know. Those, there are sacred cows who, you know, know how to make really good, uh, like, those egg little rolls. egg rolls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and don't try to outdo her. <laughs> nope. Or not, meatballs. Not cool. Don't. Those yeah. crockpot meatballs. So you just ask around, like, what do people... Are, are you speaking from experience there? I don't, I don't know. Are you, are, do, do people not stay in their lane? Is that is that what's happening here? It's very specific. They're hard to make. And I just, you know, I know some people who make really good egg rolls. And it's like... I want those egg rolls. I want those egg rolls. I don't want any other kind. I don't want to feel pressure to have to feel like I have to try something else. <laughs> <laughs> Stay in your I want to save my calorie intake for those egg rolls. Yeah. So, With or without hoisin sauce? You know, it depends. <laughs> Let me reflect, reflect on how I feel, like, feel about that serious question. 
No, but it's like, and I think it's fun to be like, if there's something you're good at making, like, I don't, I don't want to brag, guys, but I make the best chocolate chip cookies. Yes, you do. And I think about those sometimes. Oh, now, see, hold guys, on, I told hold yes. on a minute. How do I not know that you they make the best, the best chocolate chip cookies? I'm a little insulted you didn't react they're like she huge did. I have no idea. I have no. They're what? amazing. And so the thing is, is I'm good at that. I know I'm good at that. And I will bring that. And I will rock it. You didn't yeah, bring any today. today. <laughs> I mean, seriously. I got up at 3.40 to fly here and was delayed four hours. I didn't have time to make chocolate chip Whatever a cross-country travel. That's not a real excuse. <laughs> it's been a long day, guys. Mm. Um, but, like, you know, that's, like, a way that people can get to know you. We're hey, going to have to have I'm, a chocolate chip, chocolate chip cookie off. I'm just saying. I'm, I make some pretty good ones. It, you might. Oh, okay. You I'm, make. I don't know. The best. Um, you know, it's this cake kind of custardy. The Nanaimo bars. Yes. Yeah, oh, see? my gosh. So everybody <laughs> brings what they're good at making or that something that they love. Like, if somebody came in with seven kids and Pringles, <laughs> I would be so happy. That's such a great idea. Anyway. Oh, and they, like, tie them all together. That would be cute. Okay. Mm-hmm. So don't bring something lame to the pot- pot list. <laughs> next. Um, next one. Don't be leaving drips dry, y'all. Oh I, goodness, that's very no. frustrating. As in, uh, So I think it's and really... it doesn't matter. I mean, it does matter. If it's vasoactive, it's a really bad thing. Yes. But even regular maintenance IV fluids, there's nothing more annoying than starting your shift trying to go find three different fluids for three right. different patients. Yeah, like I want you to think about when you're handing off your patients, like what condition you're handing them off in. I would rather have all the drips situated than than having everything look perfect in their room or whatever. Like it is really frustrating when you are starting a very busy day to have to go through and, and get those, especially if you order them from pharmacy. Oh my gosh. It's yes. very frustrating. That can be dangerous. It can. So be can, it's like, and I've seen times where it's like the nurse is starting their shift, their vaso is, go, or their levo is going at an incredible rate. And there's like, like 10 minutes left in the bag. Come on. So be considerate. There's really not cool to leave drips dry. Conversely, it's very cool to make sure you're to set your next shift the next nurse up for success and um not saying like you know give them a couple hours right like see if if you can like give them an hour or two to be able to get into their shift meet say hello to all of their patients yeah you know maybe clock in before their IV pumps start going off that's preferable and Um, i just as a general rule like nurse hack kind of thing is if, it, if I have a vasoactive medication, I, I program only half the volume in so that when that beeps, then I make sure that there's another bag available. Mm-hmm. So if it's something that comes from pharmacy, I've got time to get it from pharmacy. If it's something that's in our machine, then I can go get it from the machine. Mm-hmm. And really, honestly, like we, we do seven to seven. So at six o'clock, I'm looking at everything that's hanging in all my patients' rooms. And if anything looks low, there's another one right there. Mm-hmm. It's just part of mm-hmm. my natural routine. Mm-hmm. It's really frustrating to be getting report in patient A and then patient B's IV pump's going off because the IV tubing is dry. Yeah, I would. <clears throat> so quick talking point, too, is if you're getting a report and you see it's about to go dry or it's beeping, you can say, are you going to get that before you leave? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because there, so there are some things that are not cool to expect that off going nurse to stay to do. And we'll talk about that. But that is one of them that it's like, no, you, you're not. You should you should take the extra couple minutes to go get that and make sure that it's not yeah. not going off. Well, yeah. I make sure that the patients that I just assume care of are okay. Exactly. So it is, so in a business-like assertive, hey, are you going to take care of that before you leave? And I think that's a habit that you have to start out early yes. as a nurse doing mm-hmm. because then it becomes second nature. Mm-hmm. And you're yep. not even thinking about it anymore. And yeah. then, and then you're teaching other nurses, and then they—that's their second nature. And then you, do, then you got a unit of people who are being considerate, right? Mm-hmm. Hopefully. All right. Um, next one. So let's say it's 10:30 in the morning. It's a, one of those beautiful mornings where you saw all your patients. You got them all situated. They're tucked. They're fluffed. They're medicated. And you're like, you know what? I'm gonna get myself some coffee. This is a, <laughs> this is not a normal day. Okay. <laughs> Before you go run off for a break, I would like, it would be cool 
if you asked other nurses, especially if you know another nurse is like dying, mm-hmm. if they needed some help before you went on a break. I think cool. that's fair. Fair? Fair? Not I fair. I I sense hesitancy. <laughs> No, no, I think it's fair. No, yeah. I think no, I think you should. Maybe you know I'm not gonna. Well, uh, oh, this might be bad, <laughs> but I'm not gonna go in every single room to look for every oh, single nurse. But no. if I see a nurse outside or I see something going on, or I know because you can sense when nurses are really struggling. Yes, you yeah. can. You can sense that I'm like, hey, what's up? I'm getting ready to go on a break. What can I help you do? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not. I don't. I wouldn't say that I actively go into every. Or, and or that's it, honesty. Yeah, no, I and I wouldn't, especially if you got a big unit. Like, but it, but let's say you got a pod partner. Yeah. You know, make oh, sure no. they're situated, or your you know your CNA is not dying. Um, to before you leave the unit and like are kicking it right. I I mean I think I want you to take breaks when you can get them absolutely. But if we've got somebody dying, not not a patient. I'm sorry. If we have a nurse, a nurse who's who drowning, is, who is drowning, who's in the red, who's in the red and is like on the verge of tears, I think it is kind of you to help offer to help them before you go have a break, and also um, not be mad when you ask people if they need help and they take you up on it. Yep. <laughs> because golly, I can't tell you how frustrating that is to have someone running around all the rooms. Hey, do you need help? And then they're halfway out the room before you answer them. And then you say, yeah, can you get a set of labs on this patient? I, I really need to do that, but I'm so far behind. And then they look at you like, really? You're going to ask me to do that? Like, <laughs> yeah, you just ask me if I need help. That's what I need help with. Like, don't get mad about that. Like, mm-hmm. so yeah don't 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 ask people for help or if they need help if you're not if you're gonna be like mad yeah. about the answer yeah like not cool i would rather you not even ask me <laughs> yes yes Do you guys have any more to and i think too if you are um if you know if you're really behind and someone asks you then yes give them a task say hey check my med list can you see what i'm behind with on meds or can you check my orders but if you're doing okay you know, and you really don't need if you're if you're in the in the yellow yes. green and you're and you're doing all right and you know your break you know you're gonna get your break probably in an hour, then maybe let that person get a break too. Because yes. I feel like sometimes um, I think if you um, it's kind of that self care thing as, as a nurse. Like yes, I think you need to be a team player and I think you need to 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 ask and you know be engaged be engaged that's a theme here um and and you know be willing to help but also like if you have busted your butt for three and a half hours and you're like oh my gosh i need five minutes Mm -hmm. then take it taking it yes um so yeah because you can't go go down that other side of like i can't take care of myself until everybody else is okay like yeah you have to because that can happen a lot and i see it happen a lot and i'm you know um i mean that's you get you get really worn out that way and you know and and then you stop doing it all together yeah so that's really tough like settling into having that balance of okay you know what i'm gonna i'm doing okay right now i'm gonna ask people for help because i'm actually in a place to help them Mm -hmm. i'm not going around to ask people for help if they need help just so i can say i did it Mm -hmm. right and then but also being like okay like I know I've busted my butt. I need a couple of minutes and I'm going to take them yep. and not, not waiting till everybody's perfect and gone to lunch before I go to lunch. And you know, yeah. that kind of because stuff. that's not, I mean, realistically, that's just not, I think, it's rare that I think happen. when you're doing the help thing, that it's a balance between the pay, the person that's asking for help yes. and then the person that's offering it mm-hmm. yes. because, um, you know, I don't think it's fair for someone to ask for help when all they're doing is playing on their phone. Yes. You know, yes. Like, oh my gosh. that's not okay. Ugh, I just got hypertensive. I hate when people do that. Right. Like if, if you're, if you're seriously busy, you got things going on with your patients and need help. I'm more than happy to. Or but if, if you've you spent the last sitting, hour yes. at the desk, on the internet, playing on your phone, yes. the internet, shopping yes. or whatever. No, that's not okay. No. Yeah. No, I'm I've not s- going to, I'm not going to ask. No, <laughs> I, I'm just not. And it, I've seen it before where it's like, okay, I got an admission. Oh, oh, check out this on my phone. Oh my gosh, look at this on what did this person say? And then they're like chatting for like 30 minutes when they could have acknowledged mm-hmm. the orders, gotten a few things started, gotten things rolling for the next shift. And then they act like they didn't have any time to get things done. It's like, this is not cool. Yeah. Super not cool. It's the responsibility a on, on, on both yeah. sides. And that actually flows into the next one. So I actually phrased this a little differently. Um, so I, I was going to say 
So, so let's say your patient needs a bed change and it's a two person situation <laughs> and I ask you for help. I should take the business end of that transaction. <laughs> <laughs> that's a fun way to put that <laughs> i'm trying to think of a so if you're dealing with the code brown code brown so you need to be the one that's cleaning the booty yes so like <laughs> elizabeth let's say i'm i said elizabeth um can you help me change mr Smith? you need to do what's being expelled out of the atm <laughs> 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 you need to take those dollars. <laughs> That's <Three>. your money. <laughs> I'm not sure how I feel about that. Either. I don't think I want that money. <laughs> Sometimes it's green. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh my god, it's getting it's a, it's, it's, it's we're tired. A, yeah. But uh, but like so for those of you that have not like routinely changed patients, if someone is bedbound and they need their need to be changed, what you know, and it takes two people, one person holds them up on their side safely, and so they're not injuring themselves or the patient, and then the other person cleans, and it's just it would be it's cool to if it's your patient to to take care of the not as pleasant part of that task because the first. <laughs> the first swipe, the first, the first pass, is the dirtiest. Usually, yeah. the most, most of the work, mm -hmm. and then by the time you get that situated, and then you roll them to the other side, the person you asked to come help, they just, just need to tidy things up a little, mm -hmm. make sure we're squeaky clean, mm -hmm. and pull the sheet and the pad through, and you know, I think it's cool if you take the business end. It is uh, nice. Unwritten uh, rule. Yes. I would agree with that. Because if, if you ask me to come change a patient with you, and the, every time <laughs> you're like, all right, I got them, and you roll them immediately, it's like, I got to do this every time. <laughs> it's your patient. <laughs> What's hard is when you start it, and then you're like, you know, you're you're the one that's, you're the receiving end, so you're, <laughs> the initiator has helped. <laughs> And then that person. I knew there was a reason why I wasn't in the nursing. <laughs> this is this is it right here. And then it's the darts nitty all over again, and you're like, oh my gosh! <laughs> and then you're cleaning up. Oh, that happens. I remember. I think my uh, my. Uh, you're like, stop. I think my max was three times before I walked out of the room. <laughs> three full bed changes. <laughs> Oh man! That shift change. Yeah. Anyways, yes. so if you <laughs> if you ask for help in changing your patient, you should. It, it's cool if you take the business end. Next, <laughs> don't be leaving the unit all of a sudden for like thirty minutes and not telling anybody. Oh gosh, not yeah. cool. I mean, I get it. Like some people have to pump, right? They're breastfeeding, that's pump. Or maybe they. I don't know what you have to do off the unit, and I'm not gonna explore that, but. You're responsible for patients. You're the ones who knows about your patients. And you can't just, like, go down the cafeteria for 30 minutes and it's not your lunch. And patients are calling out and that kind of thing. Not cool to do that. You have to hand off. I mean, you have to provide some sort of handoff before you leave the unit. Somebody has to assume care of your patients while you are physically not there. Right. So dis just disappearing is not no, it's negligent. an option. Yeah. It, it really is, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so providing that handoff, and it's not just, hey, Elizabeth, I'm going to lunch. It's, hey, Elizabeth, do you mind keeping an eye on yes. patient A, patient B? Patient A's blood pressure limit is this. They are on this med. Patient B has had a lot of pain today, but I just gave them pain medicine, so it's not time for anything else. You cool with that? Cool with that? You know. Beautiful. Yeah, because then if you say, I'm going to go to lunch, and you have a train wreck <laughs> that has a lot going on, and you don't let anyone know about that, like. It's not safe. Not cool. And not <clears> safe. <throat> Um, so here's another one. Don't leave the patient's room a mess. <laughs> if when I get to log into the computer, if I have to move all of your syringes and your wrappers from your flushes out of the way <laughs> so I can log in, not cool. Like, why is the patient's room that messy? Like, come on. <laughs> oh, well, it looks bad to the, it looks bad to the nurses. It looks bad to the patients and families. I mean, yeah. You don't want to appear like a, you know unorganized like slob. messy slob you want to portray the i'm a professional 
I know what I'm doing. I'm mm-hmm. taking care of what needs to be done. And then that includes putting trash in the trash can. I know. And you know, and what's important to know is patients and family members don't know what can be thrown away. Yes. They don't always know what trash actually, you know, like com- sometimes you might have a vial, you took all the med out and it's trash. They don't know that. Um, or like leaving things out, various linens that maybe they're dirty or, um, but they seem clean. Like they don't, it's, we need to do that. And it, yeah. it really doesn't take long. But when I, if I <clears throat> clock in, there's trash all over the, the bedside table and all over the, the keyboard. And there's three, there's their breakfast, lunch, and dinner tray <laughs> sitting in the corner. Mm. Yeah, that's not Come cool. on, guys. No, not, not cool. cool. That drives me crazy. Right. But <clears throat> not in a nursing textbook, but not cool. <laughs> right. 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 Um, your phone. Your the phone. phones. No, your, your cell phone. Oh, we need to take a minute and talk about this. Do you, guys, do, you, do you guys want to take the lead on this one? I mean, I think, I'm sorry, but when I see, and this happens way more now than it ever has, and, um, you know, I don't know about, you know, where everybody works. I know at work now we have cell phones that we get, uh, we have to sign out for at work every day. So we have that cell phone, and then I see so many nurses now with their personal cell phones constantly texting um or, or shopping or, or on it and and to me it just it looks so unprofessional and to me it tells me that you are not focused on your job and then when we really are on our work cell phones because that's a lot of times how we communicate with mm-hmm. providers and other nurses etc um you don't know the difference mm-hmm. and so um if I see you constantly on your phone, I don't think you're paying attention to your alarms. And especially if your alarms are going off and you're still on your cell phone. Like, I mean, when I started as a nurse, we didn't have, um, I think I still had like a flip phone. I would, you know. Oh, I had the I, one I didn't with have the a full phone. keyboard. Oh, that you slid oh. out. Yep. Mm-hmm. I think I, maybe I had a razor. I don't know. <laughs> um, But we just didn't have that. And I, I mean, I think it's taken away from... I definitely think it's taken away from paying attention to our patients. It is competing for attention. It is. It Yeah, it is a distraction. And it's like, okay, oh, I'm in the middle of a kind of a text conversation. I want to make sure I get back to him. So I'm going to hurry up and do this task in here. And then you're not paying him as much attention. You know, it's very easy um, for your attention to be taken there and to be less diligent with what you're doing at the bedside. And, too, if you think about it, like, let's let's say you're – your dad's in the ICU and you're terrified and his blood pressure's all over the place and you don't know if he's going to make it and the nurse comes in and she's about to administer a medication and her and you see her pick up her phone and answer a snapchat like and see like see snapchat come up and i see yep and your dad is like on death's door right here and you're just like what the heck yeah like i know that this is like nor like this is her his or her every day in this you know but like have some respect and some reverence for the seriousness of this environment. Yes, amen. Like I, I, it's, I feel like that's disrespectful to the experience of the people in the bed and in the room, even if they annoy you and they frustrate you and you, you, you're so annoyed with that family or whatever it is like that doesn't, they're still probably experiencing some trauma Mm -hmm. and they're probably experiencing a nightmare. And now they're seeing like their, their nurse distracted. Not cool. And I, I, I tell you what, nothing is, more of a turnoff. I, I, I saw this last year. It was a new nurse. Uh, it was her first day of orientation and she's just, she has a, a day where she's just learning where things are. She doesn't have patients. Her preceptor doesn't have patients and she's at the nurse's station on her phone texting away. And I'm like, it's your first day. And this is my first impression that yeah. I see of you. Uh, and it's not very, it's not respectful. I know. It tells me that you really don't care. Yeah. 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 So that's I think another generation and the newer generation might not think that, but that's that's a hard that's a hard thing for me to. Yeah, because we're on the nurses station is not just colleague to colleague. That is one thing. And I don't love it. <clears throat> we also have people walking by and yeah. anybody. And I know the thing is, is people will I think people justify it with, well, I see the doctors on their phone all the time. Well, OK, I get that. I, I get that. We're being like, But like. A lot of their stuff is on the phone too and like they're not at the bedside constantly right where the patient's family can see what's on your screen mm-hmm. they can they can walk by the but nurse's station if and you see think Amazon about that if up. you want to think about it that way think about have you ever been in a room with a provider and their cell phone went off 
that they're talking to the family and their cell phone goes off and they pause the conversation to look at their cell phone and or answer it and how that looks to the family. I don't like that. In that moment. Now, the family doesn't know if it's an emergency or not. They have no idea. They know it's a doctor. But think about that cringe that you have for a moment. They're just talking to their loved one about something serious going on, and they stop and answer their phone. So now picture that that's you. What does that look like from the outside? And it's not a patient. It's personal stuff. Right. Right, because I can kind of understand it from the, the with the provider because – it's, it's patient stuff. They have their alarm turned up because it's patient stuff. It's not their Instagram notifications. Right. right. And and so especially when that family can see it, it's like, oh, you're texting with your boyfriend right now and you're trying to talk to me about a DNR? Yeah. Come yeah. on. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know. I think that's um, uh, unwritten rule, but I, I think it's easily uh, crossed over. And uh, that, I think, has a lot to do with the informal leaders on the unit and what they do and what they uh, – and, and everybody's just going to follow suit. Right. Yeah, agreed. All right, guys. The next one we want to talk about is documentation. <laughs> um with electronic medical record, we do have this lovely function where you can copy and paste documentation. But where it's not cool – is when you copy and paste somebody else's documentation. Now, caveat, maybe you work at a hospital where you're not allowed to copy and paste at all, or you might not have that function. But if you're copy and pasting, copying and pasting someone else's documentation, that's not cool. No, it's really not. I mean, you, you really have to be mindful of that because you don't, you have to read what they've written. Mm -hmm. It, there's nothing more annoying than cop seeing a copy and paste of a misspelling, for example, and then you know it's been copied and pasted. <laughs> yes. Um, or, you know, you're, you're not catching the fact that the central undressing was changed every hour. Or, you yes. Know. It's I like mean, that renders your documentation as garbage because if it gets it challenged in a court of law, yep. I can I can easily say everything that you've charted is crap Yep. because it's clearly yep. copied and pasted. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, in the neuro world, we... Our patients change all the time. So, you know, how they respond to painful stimuli at 8 o'clock in the morning is probably different than how they responded at 9, which is probably different than how they responded at 10. So you have to be mindful of that and change that every time. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, <laughs> if Elizabeth's working night shift and her patient is sleeping because it's night shift and I come in in the morning and I'm just copying and pasting her doc her documentation, then was my patient sleeping all day too? Or um, awake alert oriented. Right. I'm like, your patient's been awake alert oriented 24-7 for the yeah. last three days. <laughs> well, and then we really get into something where when it's we're doing illegal. that. Well, it is illegal. And it's also really like we're turning our documentation into just something to check off our list. Mm -hmm. Not something not that's parents. accurately reflecting what is going on in front of us. Yes. yes. And and then then what's the point then, right? There's You might as well have not documented anything if you're just going to copy and paste something that's not actually going on. Just yeah. so you can check off that you did it, um, and, and I. But I, I, I want to say, we have to document a lot. We and do. It's frustrating. I think didn't you count one time how many boxes we checked? I in like did. One, it was like two hundred and something, or some oh, it's crazy something number. absurd. I did a blog post, maybe it's 2014, <laughs> called "Why Are Nurses Always on the Computer?" I think it's still live. I'll put it in these show notes. That'd be cool. Um, but it, um, it, but it was absurd the amount that we have to document is absurd and we are also constantly being told to document more <laughs> we're, we're being told to do more but we're never given more time to do it so something has to give right and a lot of people will just copy and paste documentation i've seen it where they copy and paste on the hour every hour for all of their patients that's also garbage because you can't simultaneously be in the same room <laughs> yeah. at eight o'clock yes. at eight o'clock yes. on five patients yeah. and again if that's brought up in a court of law you're you're not practicing appropriately at all because it <clears throat> or you're you're lying right yeah um so i think it's uh I, i've also i've definitely we've all seen it people copying and pasting and it's completely inaccurate and it goes back to my thing about don't ever trust the previous nurse no matter how much you love them mm -hmm. like and how much you trust them in general to be a good nurse we're all fallible humans that'll screw up and click the wrong box or you know or, you know and if you're copying and pasting it you're having something completely inaccurate see and you know i i like to look my first assessment is i will look and see what the nurse documented before me i do too because it's a flag if something's different exactly 
That's wise uh, to do. I have last filed clicked so I can see what the last thing was. Yes. Because that helps you note. Oh, wait a second. I uh, didn't hear a murmur. Yeah. Let me go Let back. me go listen again. Or yeah. I hear a murmur. Did did they have this before? Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's like, who? Did they have this before? <laughs> yeah. um, but like, so that's helpful. But when you start copying and pasting, where that's very um, easy to to really open yourself up to inappropriate document and adding the part of providers make clinical decisions based off of your documentation. Mm-hmm. So if you're also doing an accurate documentation, we could have inappropriate clinical decisions being made mm-hmm. as well. Yep. There's a lot, there's a lot that goes into that. So don't get into that bad habit. Get, get very efficient at charting an assessment. Oh, mm-hmm. for sure. Mm-hmm. Don't, don't copy and paste other people guys. All right. Uh, one more. One more, guys. Oh, gosh. One more. What Which do you think? One day. Well. Be gracious. Yes. I like that. And, and, and express <laughs> gratitude. Now, right. I want to. So there's this mentality where it's like, well, if you're an adult and you're doing your job, I shouldn't have to say thank you. People have that mentality, right? A lot of people do. I don't like that. I don't either. Now, I'm not saying that if you do the minimum expectation of your job that you should get showered with praise. No. But if you if your tech is kicking butt and doing great on bed baths, you can say, hey, thank you for doing yeah. that. Or if your patient's call light went off and someone got it for you, hey, thanks for doing that. Mm-hmm. Like um, ex- extending gratitude to people is, an, is, is part of a well-functioning team. Yep. Right? Like... And, and, I can't express that enough. You know, I think if you, if you think about it from a standpoint, like for me, it means so much when family members recognize the work that we do. Mm-hmm. And sometimes a heartfelt thank you from a family member means way more than a trinket from leadership somewhere. Yeah. You know, so I think the same can be true for us and our coworkers is I really appreciate Mm-hmm. Tasha, I really appreciate yeah. Tasha being oh, a wonderful CNA. Best, yeah. And if I say thank you to her at least ten times a day, I don't think it's enough. Yeah. Right? Like it's, you know, she's amazing at what she does. Yeah. And, she has saved my butt. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and and saying that and recognizing that it really it really shows that you value your coworkers. Mm-hmm. It Absol- makes you want to help them. It makes them want to help you more. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, because so. they know that they're going to be. Appreciated. Uh, appreciated, right? Genuinely appreciated. Like, if you think about, um, as a nurse, when, if you've ever had a provider say, hey, thanks for getting that order done real, that mm-hmm. fast, or thanks for getting the, that CT done, or what, like, how, like, oh, that's nice. Thanks, yeah. I Like, that was nice to know that. And being able to extend that to other people, mm-hmm. and pass that along, and, and allow somebody to have i don't know just feel good about something that they did i think that that and and also your role as the nurse like let's say you're a little experienced maybe there for a year and you tell the nurse that's been there for two weeks thank you like that really speaks to people it's very small yeah um small encouragement goes so far it does because especially if you walk in every day you never you're never told thank you you're never acknowledged in any capacity and you function in this silo where you're just keep your head down do your job and and you shouldn't expect anything like that's not a great place to work but if you walk in and you know what when when you show up for people and you help each other out and everybody's saying thank you and and acknowledging the work that we do and and we're encouraged and people are expressing gratitude that creates such um, a much healthier environment. Mm-hmm. People are much more inclined to treat one another and their patients well mm-hmm. and give each other grace um, because it's, it's tough being a nurse. It is hard. And the more that we can support each other through that, the better, as opposed to like, just do your job. And you, you know don't, I mean? you don't know. I mean, it, you know, you don't know what, you know, what that nurse or CNA, what their day was like the day before, you know, it's, it's, you are on your feet, usually 13, 14 hours a day at work. You go home, you know, you don't know, you know, people have to go home, take care of their families. They probably get little sleep. They come back the next day. It's just our, our work is really, really hard. And I think it's all the more reason to, to be, Mm -hmm. uh, show gratitude. Yeah, because because it is not easy. And if you can feel appreciated for it, you yeah. Know. Now, I mean, I, that's the little. I mean, you know, it's now, a little thing. But I do want to offer that balance though, because I have seen people 
perform poorly and expect mm-hmm. praise. You know what I mean? And I don't want it is it is, or I don't want to say poor like doing the absolute minimum. Like we're we're consistently talking here about being engaged and going for it and, and leaning in and that kind of stuff. But we have somebody who's disengaged who finally does the minimum expectation of their job and they want to be praised. For, I'm not talking about that situation. I mm-hmm. want people to know that. Like that is a different situation that that person needs to have account. We need to have consistently have accountability conversations and follow through and, and that needs to be dealt with in a different way. But I'm talking about people who are showing up every day that are helping each other out, that are that are doing, you know, taking some time to do a good work. Like we should like never underestimate the power of encouragement and gratitude to one another for that kind of stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. So those are some unwritten rules, guys. Don't be bringing cups to the potluck. <laughs> Don't copy and paste documentation. Take care of the business end of situations you're um, soliciting help for. Mm-hmm. Don't use leave the unit without telling people. Keep that room reasonably tidy. You don't need to be like hands and knees and mopping the floor. <laughs> but I think trash should be thrown away. I think that's, oh, that's reasonable. That's reasonable. Um, I'll make sure I get all of them. Don't be leaving those drips dry and that whole conversation about helping people and that balance. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, guys. Well, that, that rounds out our episode. Um, if you want to head to Fresh RN, let me tell you, make sure I tell you the right number. FreshRN.com slash 45 for the show notes of this um, and some freebies I'll have there. Um, if you want to rate and comment on this uh, podcast, that'd be super cool. We appreciate that. And uh, thanks, nurses. Stay fresh. <laughs> Damn crowd better hit the floor All the other fellas better run for the door Stop, drop, and roll with me I got the heat that'll make you scream